Hey guys, we're looking at what was the most popular electric bike from Bulls in 2017 in the United States. This is the Lacuba Evo E8, and the 8 designates this Nexus internally geared 8-speed hub, Inter 8. A big difference from last year is that instead of being priced at $39.99, it's now priced at $37.99. So that $200 savings comes probably mostly from it not having a belt drive. So last year, I believe it had a Gates carbon belt drive. Now it just has a traditional chain. Uh, might produce a bit more noise, a little bit greasy, and you know, bel belts are nice. However, they require a special frame that has to have a cutaway to get the belt on. Uh, they also can't be adjusted quite as easily, maybe on your own. It's, it's just a little bit high touch, you know, compared to a chain. Chains have been around for a long time. And this one is using a 44 tooth chain ring with an alloy guide. So you see how there are plates on both sides of the chain ring up there. That's going to make sure that the chain doesn't flop off while you're riding. The chain stays very, very tight and quiet in my experience because there's only one sprocket at the rear. So that's 22 tooth sprocket. So there's no derail you're hanging down that might get bumped if the bike gets tipped over or you're parking at a bike rack. It's tight. It's relatively clean because of this horn plastic chain cover and it allows you to shift at standstill just like last year because that internally geared hub. So if we come up to the cockpit here, there's this Shimano Nexus grip shifter and I can shift right now, no problem. It's not wrecking anything because it's an internally geared hub. Now, if you're pedaling hard and you're going with a little bit of extra force and you try to, try to shift gears, especially if the motor's on, it might not shift quite right away. It, it, tries to protect itself in my experience it kind of it kind of waits until you ease off and then it clink and it goes into the correct gear but if you're if you're at a standstill and you kind of ease off the pedals a little bit and then you shift usually it, it starts off um, in that in that condition so just kind of an interesting experience on this bike and we're looking at the wave frame but they also have what I call a mid-step they call it a step through but that's where it has a top tube as well as this down tube a little bit higher so you're gonna have to pick your leg up higher and if you have knee or hip sensitivity this might be the choice for you but they also have a high step diamond so you might be like well why do i want high step or a step through if i can get this really beautiful like low step it's because those ones are going to have kind of a stiffer feel this bike because there's only one tube and it, it sort of houses this battery pack it, it makes the frame a little bit flexier so you know sometimes I do this experiment where I like kind of shake the front and you can see the back almost kind of like bounce a little bit. That's frame flex. Okay. And it's, it's not something that I've experienced too much when holding the handlebars. However, if I ride without my hands, I just kind of take them off and I have a lot of weight on this rear rack. It's weighted up to 55 pounds, by the way, it's got these nice pannier guards and you know, room for a trunk bag on top. But if you get a bunch of weight towards the back of the bike, sometimes the front can kind of shimmy a little bit, especially at higher speed. And it's just, it's not a really comfortable experience. Um, I, I've also reviewed, you know, Bulls has a speed pedelec version of this bike. It's only a hundred dollars more. So $38.99 for a speed pedelec, uh, especially one that has a deep step through wave design, just like this. It also comes in mid-step and high step. I was really impressed with that, but I'm, I'm not sure I would get that one in the wave because when you start going even faster, and then you have the potential for you know rear heavy and all that like it just it, it presents a little bit of a question mark in my mind but i must say you know stock without any racks on for a 135 pound rider like myself i rode that one no hands at like 25 miles per hour and i wasn't getting a lot of speed wobble it, it felt a little precarious just because that's pretty fast to be riding without your hands um, and this is designed to be more of an upright relaxed type of bike uh, so again depending on maybe your style preference it can be a little bit more masculine to have that high step. I'm, I'm a big fan of the mid-step design, but you know, I do have sensitive knees and hips and stuff. So I, I love, especially with a class one bike, this is a 20 mile per hour top speed. They have positioned that motor weight really low. It's like six and a half pounds in that motor. They have positioned the battery low and relatively centered because it's built into that down tube. It's like seven, maybe seven and a half pounds. Um, and they managed to squeeze on bottle cage bosses. That's something I think about, you know, we were talking about the utility of a rear rack. We've got these plastic fenders. There's a little bit of rattle because of the plastic fenders. That's, you know, there, there are alloy or steel fenders, but steel can rust and alloy aluminum that can kind of get bent and stuff. So these are, they're very durable. SKS makes good stuff. I'm going to do a ride test later and go over the kind of the cobblestone 
pavement right here and, and let you see for yourself. Um, but otherwise, really nice. And the comfort is definitely there. We've got an air fork, Suntour NCX, 63 millimeters of travel with a compression, like a lockout clicker. You can hear it. And I like air forks because they tend to be a little bit lighter weight, uh, but also because it's adjustable. So you can take that cap off and add or remove air to sort of suit your body weight. So remember, I'm a lightweight rider. I would probably have a lower pressure just so that I can actually get some travel on that suspension and, and remove some of that stiffness. Uh, the tires here are also some of my favorites. We've got the Schwabi Big Apple. These are 28 by 2 inches, so a little bit wider. And that's another kind of a question mark on the speed pedelec version of this. Um, I think it's the E45S is what they call it. And that's the Sport. They still have the E45, but it's a little bit more expensive. So the S is what I reviewed recently and had that little bit of frame flex and maybe some instability because those tires were only... I think 1.6 instead of 2.0, and they didn't have puncture protection like this does. Uh, they did have the reflective sidewalls, which I love, but again, K Guard 3, that's the puncture protection. Schwabi just makes, you know, really good stuff, and having them be a little bit wider is going to give you some stability. It's going to give you more air volume and some of that float that I was talking about. So you pair that with the suspension, and then you come back here to the Celle Royale, look in saddle, see how it's a little bit wider, a little bit more relaxed. We've got these ergonomic locking grips from Ergon, brand name, and a swept back bar with an adjustable angle stem from zero to 90 degrees. So you could put this way up high and be very kind of Dutch style, like looking, being able to spot traffic, talk to your friend, no back and neck pain because you're so upright, or you can angle it forward like I have done here to be a little bit more sporty. But I'm on the small frame size right now. It actually says, uh, you know, 45 centimeters right there. Each different frame style comes in a few different sizes, so it's neat that they let you really dial this thing in. Whether it's the frame, you know, the stem, how the handlebars position, the ergonomic grips and everything, it's very comfortable. One additional point that you could adjust if you wanted was you could replace this rigid seat post with a suspension seat post from Thudbuster or Body Float or Suntour has their own NCX suspension posts, it's like 150 bucks. Um, that's going to give you even more cushion and make this like kind of a full suspension feel. This is 30.9 millimeter diameter, so make sure you get the right diameter. I recorded that spec and all the other measurements for this specific bike back at electricbikereview.com, as always, and I welcome your feedback. I got some kind of a comment last year, and the gentleman said, yeah, it feels unstable to me, and, you know, and it sounds like maybe he was a heavier guy. So that's why I'm being extra clear about, look, if you're concerned about some of the flexiness and you want to ride with no hands or maybe you're... I don't know, you know, d different scenarios, fill in the blank. You might go for that, that kind of uh, step through is what they call it, but I call it a mid step. I'm still just very impressed with this. And I, I ran into a, just a random stranger a minute ago. He's walking his dogs and he was excited. He was like, what is that? You know, I've seen you out here filming, taking pictures. And I let him, I let him take a ride. So let's cut to that real quick and you can see what he thinks. So this is Tony, he was hanging out with his dogs here. I was getting ready to do the review and he wanted to hop on. This is your first time on an e-bike, right Tony? Yeah, sir. What do you think? It's incredible, absolutely incredible. I'm, I'm actually blown away. Can this be ridden without the power assist? It certainly can, yeah. You just press that little minus button there. Okay, you can actually disengage it. Yeah, and then you do want to try that, see the difference? Yeah, like, I'd like to. With and without power? Let me give that a shot. Here we go, and the puppies are like, me too. So right now, there's <laughs> no power assist. Yep, that's just a bike. Just kind of a heavy bike, but he was also kind of excited about the internally geared hub being able to shift from standstill. Uh, nice guy. Just lives in this neighborhood. Was curious because I've, I've been taking some pictures out here and you know enjoying the beautiful, beautiful weather here, Southern California. Yeah, wow. not, not bad, eh? So incredible. You know, we were talking about the frame styles and stuff, and you asked like, okay, are more people doing these deep step through wave style because it's approachable? And I said it's in a few different frame styles. What do you think of this? How did it handle or visually? Well, I'm not a bike, you know, uh, professional, you know, a professional bike uh, guy, but I do know that this seems solid as as, as anything I've ever ridden. I mean, my reg I ride a regular specialized mountain bike. Cool. And it's just as solid as that. I mean, when you showed me, when you shook it a little bit, I could see there's a little bit of flex. Yep. But but when you're riding, you don't feel it. Rock on. Yeah. And this has all the fancy stuff, like the ergonomic grips, and then the adjustable stem, and lights, and fenders, and so it's kind of a do-it-all package. Uh, this is one of their most popular bikes last year, and um, 
I'm, I just appreciate wow. you sharing your, your thoughts, yeah, man. Yeah, I'm sold for sure. <laughs> Sweet. I'm going to go Try, hand these on guys the back. Yeah, I got to take my dogs back. I'll trade you the dogs <laughs> for the bike. Great. Right, that you can put like a little bobsled team with these guys. <laughs> right, Have man, a good thanks. day, Tony. Yeah, you too. Nice to meet you. Okay, guys, pretty cool, right? So the price is $37.99, and then the weight is 56.9 pounds, right around that, that range. So almost 57 pounds, a little bit heavier uh, in part because it has the fenders and the rack and, you know, the bigger tires. And I just think, you know, it'd be interesting to weigh this back to back with one of the other frame styles because I do think they have to reinforce it to be able to fit that battery. The battery this year has been improved a lot, in my opinion. Um, I like that they've got this rubber kind of a protector on the bottom of it, even though you got the fenders there too. And it goes all the way down to the base of the motor casing. It's a little bit nicer than 2017 where they just had like a padded sticker. And then there was a two-step locking mechanism. So see, there's a keyhole over here. I feel like it's a little bit exposed to dirt and water and stuff, but apparently this has decent ingress rating. You could still ride this in the rain and everything shouldn't be a problem. But you had to unlock it and then there was like a lever that you had to slide before the battery would, would come out. And the, you know, the battery is like seven pounds and it's, it's also a little bit, I don't know, I, I guess I would say, I use, I use a little bit of caution taking this battery out because it feels like it can kind of clunk down and it's a little heavier than it, it seems at first. So, you know, here's the charging port. It, it uses an energy bus charging standard. It's magnetic, so if you trip over the cable, it just pops out instead of tipping the bike over or bending or cracking, and I like that. I would probably just leave the pack in most of the time and charge it, but if you're someone who's commuting with this bike and you want to charge it at the halfway point, maybe at work, or maybe you're someone who lives in an apartment and you don't want to leave the battery out in the, in the really cold or extreme heat and you want to take it up inside, you can take it off. I'm going to do that, but first, you know, this little rubber cap doesn't always seat quite right. There we go. I've got it. It's still better than last year's, but maybe just something that I think about. It uses an ABUS locking core, and ABUS has this program where you can send in the code for the keys that you're using, and they'll actually create a lock, maybe like a folding lock that you could put right here, or a U-lock or a chain lock, and then you only need one key. So I think that's really cool. I'm going to put the camera down. So I just unlock it. And it's it's holding okay right now, but there have been a couple times where it just, it kind of, it, whoa, kind of comes out. And again, it, it is a little bit heavier, so just be cautious. 37 volt, 17.5 amp hour. This is pretty significant. The capacity is about 650 watt hours compared to like the Bosch Power Pack and a lot of other standard batteries that are 500 watt hours. And then it uses the same energy bus charging port. And I think you can plug into either one of those. And it also has like a little, you know, LED charge level indicator. So it's, it's a neat battery, right? Just, you know, do be careful about where you store this and, um, and putting it on and taking it off. Put it on real quick here. There we go, and it clicked. There we go, make sure it's secure. So there's that, and, and I wanna call out, this is sort of a pre-production bike, so it doesn't have the casing on the other side of the motor. It won't look ugly like that uh, when you actually get yours. Got a heavy adjustable length kickstand back here, plenty of space so that the crank arm's not gonna collide with it. And then we've got hydraulic disc brakes. Uh, they use Shimano M315 dual piston calipers, and we've got three finger levers up here with adjustable reach, so you can kind of bring them in a little bit. 180 millimeters up front, 160 in the back. That's fine for a class one, 20 mile per hour bike. And we got the display up here. I was talking about how the battery is removable. The display is also removable. So if you just twist it like that, you can take it with you. And it's got this cool little, yeah, micro USB charging port on the bottom. So you could actually potentially mount your phone or some other accessory up here while you're riding and pull battery power from the main battery. Here we go. There it is. And this is adjustable angle, but it's the kind of thing where you kind of set it once and then it doesn't, it's not like you can adjust it on the fly. So in some ways, given how big this is and how the whole thing is shiny, you could get a little bit of glare going on. Um, and that's, you know, compared to like the, the Bosch Intuvia display that you can just pivot at any time this is a little bit of a compromise. You might have to carry a tool. We've got a flick bell over here for safety. I think that's pretty good. And then these, yeah, I think these are the pedals, plastic, and they've got this anti-slip rubber. If you do slip off, you're not gonna get cut up compared to like a metal pedal. However, you don't get as much surface area. It's not quite as stiff and it's just not as grippy. So you can buy your own um, like metal or magnesium Welgo pedals online and they sell a bunch of different colors and they're like 
20, 30 bucks on Amazon. So me personally, the way I ride, I would probably upgrade those pedals just because I want to feel a little bit more secure on this bike. I feel like we've gone through almost everything. Quick release on the front. On the back though, we just have this 10 millimeter threaded axle with nuts and that's because of the internally geared hub. They, I don't see those with quick release very often. Um, and then we do have like an adjustable hanger it looks like so you can kind of angle that. The, the rack is, you know, feels pretty sturdy. It's mounted down here. It's not trying to stretch to the front uh, on these seat stays. And then it also holds the fender. So the rear fender seems like it's pretty well secured. Again, we'll do that test in a minute. And then we do have integrated lights. So these lights are going to run off the, the main battery pack. And I think this one's like 70 lux or something. It says 60 right here. But again, I've got the official details back at the, the website. One complaint I have about this is that it's more of a B scene kind of light. Um, you know, and the, the way it's mounted right here on top of that suspension, like arch, that's the part that moves. So when you're going over bumps, the light's going to be kind of like bouncing, right? And potentially creating like a little bit of a, I don't know, just a difficulty in seeing where you're going. It's already dark, you're already moving, and then the suspension could be bouncing around if it's rough terrain. So this is not my favorite position. I would prefer if it was mounted up here on the handlebars. And I think the speed pedal, like it is, it's mounted up there. So that's a better better choice on the speed pedal. Like. And then at the rear, we just have a basic, I think it's like a one LED Fushan, um, you know, LED reflector light kind of thing. It's nice that it's below the rack and it's not gonna be blocked by any bags or on the saddle, sometimes your coat comes over and blocks it. Celly Royal does have this click out piece so you can put your own accessories on there, but again, sometimes they get covered. I feel like there's also, you know, it's this is the small frame, but you, you don't wanna get too crowded. You'd have to slide the saddle all the way forward if you wanted to go all the way down for that super low standover height, but there is almost enough room here with the rack. So I'm just thinking about the different configurations. I have the saddle higher because I want to get full leg extension and this bike's on the small side for me. So again, integrated lights, really nice to have them, but they're a little bit more basic on this particular bike. And then the display panel. So once the battery's mounted, it's charged up like it is for us here, you press this little power button on the button pad over here and the display comes to life, beautiful. It is backlit so you can use it uh, at night or in the early morning. We've got a battery infographic with five bars. So each bar is like 20% and then it leaves something to be desired. I prefer percentage, but you know, it's it's quick glance kind of thing, speed and miles per hour. And then we've got assist level, it's these blocks. So if I press the plus or minus, it's gonna go to one block, two blocks, three blocks, four blocks. That's the highest level of assist. So I think one block's like 50% assist and four blocks is 320% assist. So it's, it's very capable. And the motor does put out up to 90 Newton meters of torque. This is the Broza T. So it's, it's like the first motor that I saw uh, in the United States. Now they have the S, it's like a kind of a sport one that's a little bit more powerful, like 15% and maybe 1.25% more efficient or something, but it's a similar form factor, relatively lightweight, smooth and quiet, because there's still a belt, um, a Gates carbon belt inside this. So it's connecting like these planetary gears that uh, basically up convert like a super fast little motor in there to make it more powerful and then, you know, transfer that through your drivetrain. It's, it's a good system in my experience because it's quiet, it's smooth, and it, it's measuring your rear wheel speed with this little sensor, your pedal cadence and your pedal torque. And it's just, it's nice. Like there are a couple other motors out there that only use cadence and it feels like start stop or the Bosch motor, which is one of my favorites, but it can feel a little bit zippy and it, and it has a little bit more noise. This one's pretty quiet and smooth. So I definitely appreciate that. Um, Broza is like a German, automotive type of company. So they seem to be pretty big. You get a two year comprehensive warranty on this bike plus five plus years on the frame. And it seems like Bowles is using similar battery integration, like the design and stuff. So you should be able to get a battery someday if and when this ever poops out on you. But frankly, with that high of capacity and then the ni nicer charger interface and everything, I just, I feel like this is a more premium bike and that's why it does cost a little more than some of the, the cheaper ones we see today. So anyway, that's the pedal assist. Um, there is a light button here, so you know, press the light button and that activates the, the lights. There it is. You can actually see it shine in a little bit in the front. Let's check out that backlight. Yeah, just a single LED, but it gets the job done. And then there's also walk mode. So let's say that 
you know, maybe you've been riding around town and you get to a craft fair and you see your friend and you want to walk across the grass. Well, you can stow the kickstand and then hold that walk mode and then the bike will push itself. There we go. And that's pretty nice because, you know, it, it is like 57 pounds and that's, that's not super fun. Also, if you get a flat tire, walk mode can be handy as well. And then the center button here, this little box thing, it's kind of a menu button and you don't press it, you just touch it. It's touch sensitive. And when you do that, these other trip stats change. So right now we're looking at time of day, range 42 miles that's just an estimate how far the bike can go based on how much battery is left and maybe how you've been riding and range actually changes as you arrow up or down so see with the highest level of assist it was saying here we accidentally touched it this touch panel over here and changed it on us so there we go range at the highest level it's saying well maybe 42 miles and then at the lowest level of assist where the motor's not working as hard it says 93 miles so there's really excellent range on this because of the you know mid drive that leverages the gears because of these efficient tires and because of that higher capacity battery pack the next menu here if we touch that menu button is trip distance trip calories trip time average speed max speed total distance total time time of day and then we're back to range just a ton of menus it's easy to accidentally bump off because it's touch sensitive versus a click but you know whatever I, I think this button pad's easy enough to reach it could be nice if it was a little little lower but i just love that there's a removability and you've got the usb charger and you've got the backlit and it's big and and bright so if you're you know someone with a kind of limited vision you can still see it i, I just feel like they've done a really good good job overall and then if you hold uh, the light button i think we get into a menu there we go. And to cycle through these, you press the menu button again. So you can reset your trip, reset all lights. You can change them to automatic. There's a sensor right there or manual, the date, the time format, 12 hours versus 24 hours, the time of day, the language, and then the units like Imperial or metric. So tons of stuff. Hopefully that helps you out if you get this bike and trying to figure out how to use it. It might be time for me to finally get on this thing and go for a ride. I'm going to try to find a quiet place because there are some lawnmower guys out today and uh, I want you to be able to hear the motor. It is just super quiet so I'm going to take it all the way up to the highest level of assist and I'm going to start off in a really low gear so that I can spin quickly and that's when the motor makes the most noise is at high RPM. And this motor seems to be able to support up to maybe even beyond 120 RPM which to me is like yeah, I like to spin fast, so let's simulate that. Not bad. Definitely got me going pretty quick there. I think we were almost at 20 miles per hour. And, you know, when I was pedaling hard, I did notice the frame was kind of bending a little bit. That's that frame flex that I was talking about. So. I'm a sportier rider, I like to pedal fast. This might not be the bike for me unless I was getting the mid step or the high step. But let's simulate that no hands thing I was talking about. So I'm in assist level five, I'm pedaling, which creates a little bit of movement on the frame. It could trigger some speed wobble. We're up to 15 miles per hour, 16, 17. I'm leaning back and there's no speed wobble. So, you know, it feels very stable and it does track nicely of those bigger tires the wheel diameter on this bike is 28 versus 26 so that's it's kind of efficient it's like a road bike style the 26 would bring the whole frame closer to the ground you know the the middle of those rims would be lower so part of me wonders like why didn't they go with 26 but these have a lower attack angle so they can just ride right over cracks and things and maybe be a little smoother and they have a little bit more rolling momentum so i don't know it's kind of interesting. I'm gonna do that one more time. You might have noticed that the chain ring keeps spinning just for a moment after I stop pedaling. So there is a little bit of delay. It's a very sensitive system, but it, that's part of that smoothness I was talking about. It's not like on off. It's kind of like on off, you know, and it's sort of, yeah, I don't know. It's the kind of thing that's nice to ride if you can. Now let's do that noise test with the fenders on this cobblestone stuff.
not too bad. Overall, I think it's a fairly quiet uh, bike, smooth, and it, it does give you enough power to climb pretty significant hills. The thing is you wanna make sure you're in a lower gear if you're doing that. Because if you're in a, a high gear and you're pedaling slow like I am, the motor doesn't have that mechanical advantage. So let's do some shifting here, take it down. You might hear it clicking there for a second, and, and that's what happens if you're shifting and there's too much pressure on it. Won't, it won't shift right away. Um, but overall, it's working pretty well for me. Hey guys, you're mounted to the right chain stay, which connects back to that motor interface. So you're probably gonna hear the motor a little bit more in this position. I hope you can balance that out with when I was holding the camera, because it is really quiet. But this is gonna let you see how quickly it starts and stops when I pedal. Um, I'm gonna start in the lowest level of assist, but I'm gonna pedal fast so you can get a sense for that higher pitch sound. And then I'm gonna arrow up to uh, a higher level and climb a hill. Should be good. Keep an eye on the frame, maybe flexing. Also, I've aimed it up so maybe you can see that suspension as well. And listen for those fenders. So that's the Bulls Lacuba Evo E8, one of the most popular bikes in their lineup apparently. For the full write-up on this, you'll see back at electricbikereview.com. Have fun out there, ride safe, chime in with any questions or feedback you have. And again, I don't mean to spook you too much about the step through, I just wanna communicate clearly that there are some trade-offs. Frame flex versus stiffness, but difficulty getting on the frame. So, yep, pick what, whatever's best for you and maybe, you know, connect with people in the forums or ask some questions and I'll do my best to help you out. Hey guys, we're back in the garage and I wanted to show you the charger up close. This is what it looks like. It weighs 2.5 pounds, but it puts out five amps. So that's nice considering you've got a higher capacity battery on these Bulls bikes. Again, 37 volts, 17.5 amp hours. And this is the charging port we discussed earlier that interfaces with that magnetic energy bus Rosenberger standard. The thing is, because it's magnetic, if it touches the ground and you've got kind of a dirty shop floor, it can pick up iron filings. Not a huge deal, but it is a little bit bigger, bulkier, and heavier than like the Bosch charger, for example. So this is what it looks like. It does have an on-off. It's in an alloy case. I mean, it feels, it feels sturdy. Um, I, I'm not, I don't want to complain too much about that, but compared to the 1.7 pound Bosch charger that puts out four amps, you know, this, this is probably... Uh, one of my favorite solutions has a proprietary plug, plugs into the side or directly into the battery. Um, this is what it looks like on top. So yeah, just some insights, something to think about comparing wise.